Hello everyone, welcome back and in today's video we're going to be solving this problem from J Advanced 2019 and this is problem 3 from the second paper. So in this problem uh, it is very important to pay close attention to the language of the problem that is a problem statement and also the options as well to actually understand what they're really asking. So yeah, with that, like do give this problem a try for a few minutes, read the problem, try to understand what they're asking in the options and then check the video out for the solution. So we have a small particle of mass M that is moving inside a heavy hollow straight tube. Along the tube axis undergoes elastic collisions at the two ends. So all collisions are uh, to be considered elastic in this case. The tube has no friction and it is closed at one end by a flat surface while the other end is fitted with a heavy movable flat piston. So the piston over here is uh, flat and at the same time it's heavy. So these two are very important details about the piston. When the distance of the piston from the closed end is L0, the particle speed is given to be V0. The piston is moved inward at a very low speed of capital V such that they have given us some relation which we will talk about in a while. Okay, and in this relation DL is the infinitesimal displacement of the piston. Okay, so in the first option they are asking us about the rate at which the particle strikes the piston. First, let's try to figure out what they are actually trying to say by using this relation. And uh, just so to avoid confusion, I am taking the velocity of the small ball as V1 and the velocity of the piston as V2. The relation that we have been given is that V2 is much less than dl by L times V1. So if I rearrange the terms a bit, I get dl by V2 is greater than or equal to L upon V1. So now let's understand each of these terms. Now what is dl divided by V2? So dl as it's given in the problem, it's like the infinitesimal displacement of the piston. So dl divided by V2 is the time it takes for the piston to advance by an amount of dl. Now and the second term is L divided by V1 and similarly L divided by V1 is the time it takes for the ball to cover a distance of L. So what they're actually saying is that the time it takes for the piston to advance by an amount of dl is much greater than the time it takes for the ball to co cover a distance of L. So basically by the time the piston moves by a distance of dl, the ball would have covered, the ball would have collided with the piston at least once. So it might, it might have collided with the piston for more than one time. We don't really know. We, we'll figure that out after a while. But so that is basically what they are saying with this particular condition. So in the in option A, they are asking us about the rate at which the particles strike the piston. So basically the rate of striking is simply the number of collisions divided by the, the time it takes for the collisions to happen. So like if uh, within a span of one second, let's say the ball collides with the piston five times. So the rate of striking is five, right? Let's say at some particular instant, the ball is near to the piston and it's moving away from it. So again, we took the velocity of the ball as V1, right? So now V1 is way higher as compared to V2, right? So we can, for a span of one collision, we can practically assume this piston to be at rest and the length of the tube at any general time is given to be L, right? So, so what's the time it takes the ball to go from here go hit the ball and then come back. And that time, let's call it delta t, is going to be 2L divided by V1, right? Within that time period, it completes one collision. So the number of collisions would be simply one and the time it takes is 2L by V1. The rate of striking comes out to be V1 divided by 2L. So now some of you may have had a doubt that how did I take L to be a constant? So won't this piston advance forward by a small amount. Yeah, but it's so small that we can almost neglect it within a span of one collision. That's exactly what we discussed with this condition, right? So the rate of striking came out to be V1 divided by 2L, okay? And V1 is the speed of the ball at any general time. But what they have given is that it is equal to V divided by L. And V is basically V1, okay? So option A would actually turn out to be wrong. Now let's move on to option B. So in option B, they're claiming that after each collision with the piston, the particle speed increases by 2V. So this is basically a result uh, that we discuss in collisions that if we have two objects and one of the object is massive in comparison to the other object. So, so like basically a collision of a ball with a wall and the wall itself is moving. We have to comment on the velocities of the ball and the wall after collision. So multiple ways of finding the answer to this problem. So one, so the base, most basic way is by using momentum conservation and the equation of coefficient of restitution. Collision is elastic and the wall is massive in comparison to the ball. So the first equation is a uh, momentum conservation. So again, this is the initial momentum in the x direction for the system. 
uh, and I assume the mass of the ball to be m1 and the mass of the ball to be m2. So if I and after collision v1 and v2. Now we can write the uh, coefficient of restitution equation as in this particular case the collision is elastic so we can say the velocity of approach which is u plus v must be equal to the velocity of separation. Okay actually I'll just assume the v1 to be in this direction so this is going to be negative as well. So and the velocity of separation is going to be v1 minus v2. Now as we have two equations and two variables we can solve for v1 and v2. So now solving for v1 and v2 uh, we'll get these two expressions so I express them in the form of m1 by m2 so that I can tend that term to zero right because m2 is much greater than m1. So if I apply the condition that m1 by m2 is much less than one this term would go to zero and this term would go to zero so I'll get v1 which is the final speed of the mass as u plus 2 capital V and V2 you guys can solve for it it will come out to be equal to V itself. So basically what is happening so after collision uh, as a wall is massive its momentum is undisturbed by the ball right it, it is unchanged its velocity remains unchanged whereas the speed of the ball increases by an amount of twice the velocity of the ball. So this is the final velocity assuming that the wall is massive. Now you can also use the center of mass uh, approach to prove this result. So as the ball is much lighter as compared to the wall we can assume the center of mass of the system to actually lie very close to the wall right. So what is the velocity of the center of mass? It's the velocity of the wall itself it's v. So from the cm frame it would appear as if the ball is approaching it with a speed of u plus v and the wall is now at rest. So after the body collides uh, with the wall as the collision is elastic the separation velocity is the same as the approach velocity uh, but as we need the velocities in the ground frame we'll just re-add the velocity of the wall back to each of the bodies and it was equal to v right. So if I add them back I'll get the new speed as u plus 2v which is exactly the previous result so you can all use this as well. Okay, so with that the option that after each collision with the piston the particle speed increases by 2v is actually a correct option. Now in option C they are asking uh, if the piston moves inward by an amount of dl the particle speed increases by this much. By reading the option C we can say it is somehow related to uh, option B right because in option B we calculated how much the speed of the particle increases per collision and that was equal to two times capital V. In option C they are asking for every advancement DL uh, of the piston how much does the particle speed increase. So they are similar but we have to relate these two quantities. From our discussion of the first option we came to the conclusion that the rate of collision was equal to V1 divided by 2L. So this is the number of collisions of the ball per second. So we have to find the increase in the speed of the ball during the time period in which the piston advances by an amount of dl. So let's figure out how much time the piston takes advance by an amount of dl and that is easy right because we know the displacement that is dl divided by the speed of the piston which is v2. So now if I have to find the number of collisions let's call this time as some delta t. So if I have to find the number, so what is the number of collisions in this delta t time period? It is simply the rate of collisions times delta t, right? So that comes out to be, so now we have the number of collisions. Now we can determine the increase in speed because per collision increase in speed we know, right? It is equal to 2 times capital V or in this case V2. So all we have to do is multiply the number of collisions with the increase in speed per collision that is 2 times v2 and this turns out to be v1 dl by l. In the option it is given as 2v okay v is basically v1 okay 2v1 dl by l so there is a factor of 2 here which means option c is wrong. So now let's read option d. So the particle's kinetic energy increases by a factor of 4 when the piston is moved inward from l0 to half l0. So basically all we have to do is uh, find what the velocity of the ball becomes by the time the length l becomes half. So now here we determine that the increase in speed that is dv1 is equal to v1 dl by l. So now we can separate out the variables right so we can say dv1 upon v1 equals dl by l. So now we can integrate this expression. Initially the length was l0 and finally it became l0 by 2. Initially the velocity of the ball was given to be v0 and we need the velocity at the instant when the length becomes halved and after solving this you'll get the velocity v as 2v0. So when the length becomes half the velocity of the ball becomes two times which means the kinetic energy which basically means the kinetic energy becomes four times and that is what they claimed with the option which means option D is correct. Hence the answer to this problem is option B and option D. So that was it for this problem guys if you have any doubts you can comment down below and do share this video with your friends and 
a like and subscribe to the channel if you enjoyed the video and thanks for watching